As mentioned, Inanna was known to the Sumerians, but the Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians would come to know her as Ishtar. Both were thought to be two individual deities at some point in time, but during the reign of Sargon the Great, the first ruler of the Akkadian Empire and conqueror of many Sumerian states, Inanna and Ishtar became conflated into one deity. Interestingly, it is believed that when Sargon the Great acknowledged both Anu and Inanna, or Ishtar, as being the sources of his success and authority, her popularity dramatically increased. The name Inanna, on the one hand, was believed to have been derived from the Sumerian Ninanuk, which meant the Queen of Heaven, or the Lady of Heaven, thus signifying her importance as a figure of some great prominence. The name Ishtar, meanwhile, is believed to have been related to the West Semitic god Attar, he or she who was also associated with the planet Venus. In some ideas, Attar was associated with a specific day star that was determined to be a male deity who presided over the arts of war. Yet if the star was in the nighttime, then it was considered to be a female deity who presided over the art of love. Interestingly, both the art of war and love both fall under Ishtar's realm of influence, so a correlation can be made between the two deities and suggest the origin of her name. Yet with many Mesopotamian gods, the origin of their names are frequently contested and there is no way to know for sure where certain deities earn their titles. In Inanna's case, more than just the origins of her name are contested, mostly on the account that the elements she represents are bound to some contradictions when compared to the other gods and goddesses. This is understandable, considering what we have here is a goddess who stands for both love and war. One idea surrounding this is in regards to the time before the synchronization of Inanna and Ishtar, where Inanna received not only the domains of Ishtar, but also domains of other deities that may have caused her to adopt features that were not congruent with each other, such as love and war, two seemingly polar opposites. Yet another idea proposes that Inanna may have originally been a proto-Euphratean goddess, and was only incorporated into the Sumerian pantheon after it had already been established. In some regards, this would explain her youthful nature, as the nearest addition to the line of gods, and would see her adopt the domains that were either not assigned to the others, or could be better utilised by herself. After Sargon's reign, Inanna's cult would grow rapidly, and she would have temples in the regions of Lagash, Nippur, Shurupak, Ur, and Zabalim. Her main temple was thought to have been in Uruk, however, and was known as the Iana Temple, which meant House of Heaven. Now originally, the Iana Temple was a space dedicated to Anu, and was the main cult centre of this once important god. But with the increased popularity of Inanna, the temple itself was transformed in favour of her, where it would also serve as an abode for her priestesses. Interestingly, there exists some mythology to show this transition. In the fragmented poem, Inanna takes command of heaven. We learn that Inanna becomes dejected over the fact that such a grand temple does not belong to her, and that she intends to claim it as her own. After overcoming various trials in order to obtain it, she later reaches Anu, who is shocked by her ambitions. Despite being her superior, he concedes the temple to her, and thus, it becomes a part of her domain. Some believe that this represents Anu's acceptance that he is simply no longer the most favoured god in the eyes of the people, and so, submits his temple to Inanna, knowing full well that such usurpation is inevitable. Others see the poem as a representation of old authority becoming eclipsed by a new one, and the transference of power from the priests of Anu 
to the priestesses of Inanna. While Inanna's cult in Uruk prospered, the entity Ishtar also gained popularity in the kingdom of Assyria during the reign of the Assyrian king Assurbanipal. Here Ishtar was actually able to become one of the most renovated deities in the Assyrian pantheon, even going on to overtake the importance of the national Assyrian god Ashur. Another interesting feature about the temple of Inanna was that a set of her priests, those known as the Gala priests, were thought to be those who had differed from traditional gender binary and were known to adopt female names. There are also accounts of the servants of Ishtar in Acadia, who were thought to dress in female clothing and perform dances in her temples. Ancient Akkadian stories also suggest that the parties involved may have been homosexual, a glimpse perhaps